So this is a uh, this is pretty serious. I think we might be in trouble. So throughout this video, I'm going to try to explain all this, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. I can give some suggestions, but we'll see. So it's warmed up quite a bit today. We've been in below freezing for the last I don't know week, week and a half, something like that. And while it was below freezing, I had bought three bags of chicken thighs and legs for about 10 bucks a piece and I was going to can them but they were frozen so tight that I couldn't break it apart well I, I put it out here in this cooler because we don't have enough room in our little bitty fridge to put it in and I was going to wait until it thawed out then I would can it starting to thaw out so tomorrow I'm going to start canning chicken again now I don't make videos about canning anymore I used to but those videos never did very well no matter what I did, they just they just didn't go. And I, I know why. Because this is a guy's channel. Most of the audience is men. And for whatever reason, men just, in general, are not interested in canning. They want to do those manly man things. They want to smoke their meats and, and make jerky. <laughs> you know, and deboning chicken just isn't part of their plan. But I tell you, that if you are concerned about the future and being able to survive I really suggest you learn how to can we do pressure cannings we can meat that's all we can we don't do vegetables anymore I used to do vegetables a long time ago but I don't do it anymore I'm, we're carnivores and I know there's people out there who just don't agree with that but I've never been healthier it seems odd to me that when people would tell me no we want you to go back to being sick I get that in the comment section all the time oh you shouldn't eat carnivore well, when I was doing it the way I was doing it before, had asthma, my shoulder had arthritis, I was just in bad shape, and I just knew old age was catching up with me. Going a carnivore diet, I get healthy. No, no, can't do that. I find it interesting. Nope, you got to remain sick, which is kind of the idea of this video today. Now, if you want to learn how to can, I do have my canning video still. You go to my channel, and you look for the tab that says playlist. Go to playlist, scroll down. And I know there's 10, 15 videos there of me canning all kinds of different stuff. Beef and chicken, pork, bacon. I use Tadler lids sometimes. Tadler lids are reusable. I'm a big fan of Tadler lids. I watch these prepping channels. Some of these preppers are kind of frustrating to me. They talk as though they've already been through the SHTF, the stuff that hits the fan. And they know how to deal with these situations and they're and they're always really manly men and they're the kind of guys that aren't big fans of canning no, that's a that's women's job i've actually been called a wussy before except you take the w off put a p on because i can and i would imagine it's one of these guys that's uh you know they're manly men and they're going to tell you how to smoke their meat you need to cure your meat well i've done it all Here's our sun dehydrator. We use it to now to dehydrate our eggs. She washes them and dehydrates them. And that way we can break it up in real fine particles and feed it to the chickens for the calcium. But we've used it to try to dehydrate meat. And it works, I mean, don't get me wrong, it dehydrates. But you gotta still vacuum seal it, so you gotta vacuum seal bags. If you salt cure, you gotta put it in a, a vat of salt where are you going to get the salt when you know shtf hits the fan where are you going to get it do you have vats of salt just laying around i don't but i do have canning jars and canning lids tattler lids that i'll be able to can for the rest of my life with chickens you know as we incubate our chickens i'll be able to always can my chickens if i happen to catch or kill a wildlife of some sort Possums and raccoons, I can can those if I wanted to, you know, live trap them. I can either feed it to the chickens or I can can it and then feed it to chickens later. I'm not sure I really want to eat those things. But if I get a deer by chance, if by chance I got a deer. But a lot of these preppers actually depend on the idea of going out and getting a deer. Well, everybody else is going to be depending on that too. So you got to realize the population of deer will probably go down. It's my understanding, don't quote me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but it's my understanding that the deer population almost went extinct during the last Great Depression. I wouldn't find it too hard to believe that. I mean, we, we decimated the buffalo population and we weren't even hard times then. I wouldn't rely on it, but 
canning is always going to be there especially if you have tattler lids and you can try to do it over an open fire on a fire pit and i've explained how to do that before but i don't think people are are adequately prepared because they don't actually give these things a try we live off grid and i try as hard as i can to be as self-sufficient as i can in the event that something happens and there's no more grocery stores and there's no more money and i gotta rely on myself to feed myself to make sure i got plenty of water make sure i got heat in the house and we have accomplished all of it i would say day to day we are 90 percent self-sufficient we still go to the grocery store we still buy propane but these are niceties conveniences because i don't want to work as hard every day if i don't have to I like to run the propane generator to get water out of the well. I don't have to. I can use solar panels, but that's just more work, a little bit more complicated. I can get a hand pump, which I'm still looking for a hand pump. I, I know what I want. I just haven't gotten it yet. And I can hand pump that water. But I wouldn't want to do that day to day if I don't have to. If I have to, I will. The other day, I got sick. And I was sick for about three weeks. Had a serious sinus infection. Boy, I was taking Sundays off for making videos because that's how sick I was. And it's one of the things that has concerned me is getting sick during an SHTF. Having a sinus infection, being that laid up, it would have made things a lot more complicated. I mean, I didn't want to do much of anything. I still got my chores done, not much more than that. So I was able to find antibiotics without a prescription. I could get it during an SHTF also. Wouldn't be that hard to get. I have a stockpile of it now. I can't tell you how to do it because YouTube would shut the video down for medical misinformation. But I did cure my own sinus infection. I didn't need doctors to tell me how to do it. So I even tried to take care of my own medical issues. That's why I'm on a meat diet because I think it takes care of a lot of my medical issues. This is going to be a very controversial subject. And I'm not really sure how to approach it. But one of the things that is, is going to be very complicated for a lot of people is their addictions. I don't have any addictions except for coffee. In my past, I actually stopped drinking coffee for a while. We drink only water and coffee. That's all we drink. I have a bunch of cans of coffee in the well house and storage in case SHTF happens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wean myself off of coffee just like I did the last time I stopped drinking coffee. And it won't be that complicated. I mean, the worst thing about stopping coffee is you get really tired and you get headaches. Well, so you stockpile some Tylenol and you get ready for the bad days. But I think I'm okay because I, I didn't suffer too much last time. I just kind of weaned myself off of it. A lot of these addictions, you're not going to be able to wean yourself off of it. So I don't do anything other than the coffee. I don't do any type of narcotics. I don't have any medications that I require. I don't drink. Every now and then I've always thought, man, it'd be nice to have a beer. I've thought of that before, but I just don't. Because it, once you buy the beer, it's like, man, I'd like to have another beer. Before you know it, you're getting a beer once a week, and then after that, you're getting a beer every day, and before you know it, you're drinking five or six beers a day. Well, I just don't get myself into that, that ritual. There's too much to do here. And I like to be able to keep alert in case something goes wrong and need to be able to fix it. Having these addictions makes your health poor. So I don't think a lot of these preppers on YouTube talk about these addictions. I've actually seen one of the preppers have a beer on the table while he's talking about prepping. I think part of prepping is being physically and mentally prepared for an SHTF. If you think that your life is going to continue as it always has because you have so much in stockpile that you don't have to worry about it. You don't, do you have all your medications? How long can you survive without medication? If you're on medications, have you talked to your doctor about how to get off of medications? Let's say you're a diabetic. Doctors don't even really talk about how to cure your diabetes. They only talk about how to treat your diabetes. And I'm pretty convinced based on some of the YouTube videos I watch that you can cure them. You gotta get off the sugars, you gotta get off the carbohydrates. Well, carbohydrates is just a sugar. I actually had a medic one time, not trying to get too scientific on this because I'm not that big of an expert. I had a medic say, he went to a call, he was a paramedic, 
and he went to a call and this person was burning so much sugar went into a diabetic coma that he could smell alcohol coming out of this person's mouth now this person hadn't drank any alcohol the sugar was being fermented into alcohol so you need to think about how you're going to get off the, the medications and if you're taking illegal narcotics i think something like 75 million people in the country are on illegal narcotics how are you going to survive without that you're not going to be able to just find it it's not going to be available and you're still going to need it i know a lot of people will say oh no what i take is not addictive they can't seem to ever live without it they always make excuses why it's so good to have i drive better when i'm you know no you don't <laughs> you got to keep your mind clear because problems are going to come up and for example let's say you do have a stockpile of alcohol shtf hits the fan and you decide that oh, i've had too much stress today i want to kick back and have a few beers and so you get drunk and then all of a sudden something happens people start to show up i'm not talking about the hordes of people that are going to come and steal all your food but people show up you start having problems with them are you going to be able to address this issue it's just you against you know maybe a family comes by are you going to be able to address it are you going to be passed out you got to get rid of the normal lifestyle i'm criticized quite a bit that i lived like this i feel like that if something were to happen i probably wouldn't even notice for a few days the biggest indication to me would be as if we lost internet i would probably think huh wonder what happened we have our cell phones that's about all we have that kind of ties us to the grid is the cell phones which is our internet so if i if i lost youtube i might think huh wonder something happened the town has lost electricity before and i didn't know it i didn't know it until the next day when the neighbor came over and said uh, you got any coffee i could have my coffee pot doesn't work because i don't have any electricity i said oh what happened he said well the town's out of electricity <laughs> i had no idea i just didn't have any reason to know that's the way you want to be able to adapt to a situation heard a prepper say the other day his electric went out first thing he says oh no this is the big one and then once he realizes probably just the car hit the electric pole he says okay what do i need to do i thought you were a prepper you should already know what to do you shouldn't have to get your checklist out you should just do it so that's the problem i think with prepping so if you'll click this up next box take you a video where i was talking about canning and being prepared for a food outage so if i can inspire you to get rid of your addictions who needs them so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.